often uh, playing around with ghost images. When the Museum of New Mexico did the, the, the New History Museum, uh, I was moved by a couple of things. One, I was moved by the fact that we had a crane that came to this town that, for me, represented a real uh, iconic f structure that seemed to me to represent a lot of the changes that were happening very quickly in this town. And here was the tallest of all structures, you know, juxtaposed to our, our really iconic old adobe building, that, that, which in itself was a collaboration of many kinds of, of architectural ideas, but uh, it became kind of the, the uh, grassroots of the Santa Fe style, which a lot of us have put down in many ways, but it was, it was uh, kind of, a lot of it was very real. As is, for instance, you'll see in this gallery, you know, a carryover of that kind of thinking, an attempt to be as honest as that museum was. You know. So, anyway, I took a lot of these local images that I had grown up with and just kind of played with them. And basically, I brought back a lot of ghosts that would not, would not show up in the new history museum. It was, was playful in the sense that it, could, it had an arm that would stretch to the middle of the plaza. And uh, the other, uh, you know, and, or to the art museum or to the burrito company or the Ocean Avenue. And so I just began to think about some of the characters that were in my life from childhood. Uh, on the, the painting over here on the left, I don't know if you can see it, is Flavio Gonzalez, who taught me how to lay adobe. And many summers I worked with Flavio. And he was, he was a quintessential craftsman who loved adobe. And he died many years ago, of course, but yeah, I brought him back. And he came with his goat. He always would bring a little goat when he would come to lay adobes. And so Flavio came down, you know, wanting to lay adobes because he heard a beautiful new building going up. I'll lay some adobes. But of course, everything is steel and plastic and uh, styrofoam and all the, the contemporary material. But uh, the, the crane operator gave him a ride up over the, the oldest adobe existing structure in America. And so that's how Flavio got into it. I don't know what, what I could say about growing up here, but I knew a lot of the, a few of the old founders, but they were pretty old men when I was a kid. I, I started out as a little kid on Canyon Road when, I, when my dad brought us back from, from Ohio as a year old. And uh, my brother and sister had both been born in this town. And we lived there on Canyon Road. And my dad, Hal, got early on uh, and connected with the WPA. And he was a earthwine printmaker and had learned a lot from Gus Bellman and those early artists. He was a country boy who didn't, you know, he didn't have a lot of credentials, so to speak. But he was, he was a very astute observer of life and, and people. And he did what I would call a memory painting. He painted pretty much everything he did was from his experience and from the memory. And uh, he started out, did a lot of, of lino cuts. Um, we moved out of Canyon Road about 1935. And, and how was connected around the edges. He was a really good friend of somebody like Schuster uh, and Bauman. But, you know, so there were a lot of, of high-end artists that, you know, in themselves were great painters and had, had careers in the East and came here. And it was a, it was a real social structure within the art community. And uh, so Hal went through that whole thing of trying to do his own thing, even in the 1930s. Uh, which was real and honest to him. So he, he avoided becoming a painter of aspens or, you know, the cliche thing that many of them did very well, but uh, he painted pretty much his own memories of the life that he had led.